Oh, hello there. Welcome to my humble home, a home for cinephiles, people who take great care in analyzing and dissecting the intricacies of true cinematic masterpieces. So come with me on this journey to dissect. Okay, I was kidding, asshole. I did that serious analysis shit the whole time I was doing my bachelor's degree. So how about we just... Okay, so James Wan's groundbreaking 2011 horror film Insidious is about a family who is reeling from their son who has fallen into a comatose state only for them to realize that his soul has astral projected into a spirit realm that this old woman calls the Further. So essentially, the monsters are trying to use this kid's body as an entry point into our world. So let's write this down. The kid is the key to the monster's benefit. Now, apparently the same thing happened to the kid's dad when he was a kid. And we learn more and more about this throughout the first two films of the franchise. So let's write this down. Historically repeated behavior of the monsters using children to do demon shit. Another thing that is consistent with this fucking franchise is the usage of doors as the gateway into the further. The first two movies reference this red door right here. I don't really remember the third movie except for this scene. Oof but a ton of the posters hint at or involve a door. Now the fourth movie is called The Last Key because it involves a demon or monster that has literal keys for fingers. But Andre, the finger keys are used for what? Oh my God, have you not been listening, you goofy bitch? It's used for doors. <coughs> or that. And the final film in this franchise is a callback to the original time period of the first two films and is literally called The Red Door. Because it's about the same red door as the first two movies and the trauma that it triggers. So let's write that down. And what do we have so far? Innocent children used to benefit the mobsters. They've historically been doing this to kids for a while now. Doors. Doors are the gateway. So, uh, what can we take away from this? Um... What can we take away from this? That's right, the further from the Insidious franchise is just a fucked up evil dystopian version of Monstropolis. Insidious is just the timeline if Mike and Sully failed. Don't believe me? Do you remember how scary Randall Boggs and Henry J. Waternews were to us as kids? Exactly, so don't go around telling me that this asshole who looks like him from the Powerpuff Girls wouldn't fit in perfectly. He'd be filling up the scream canisters real fast. Oh, what are you upset? Have I wasted your time here? It hasn't even been five minutes. Oh, fuck. I, 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 what, are you upset? Are you thinking I wasted your time? It hasn't even been five minutes. The proof is right here. We made the list together, bucko. This is called Brain Dead Cinema. Do you think I'm really gonna make a serious analysis and theory based off of my evidence? No, but it still works. I wrote this last night in my notes app, alone on the couch, tipsy, watching Coca Melon. <laughs> Tune in next week to Brain Dead Cinema to see my explanation as to how the cat from the Cat in the Hat is actually part of a scared straight service. Be further on my monster till I ink. This video was not sponsored by LaCroix.